Dear friends and church family, another week has come and quickly gone by, and I pray that this week has been good to you. I always pray for each one of us that we may sense the presence of God as we journey on each day. May we always remember that great is God's faithfulness and his mercies are new every morning as it is recorded in Lamentations 3 verses 22 to 23. I wrote this once on my Facebook page a few years ago and I find them relevant and encouraging even today. I said, in life's tragedies, we try to reflect on our faith in God who gives us solace. Yet, this greatly tests the strength and the character of our faith. Faith is not a painkiller, nor is it a blanket of invisibility that it enables us to go through life untouched by pain. We live in a, a fractured world, and it takes a lot of courage to remain confident in God. This is called walking by faith and not by sight. It is courage and faith that faces in doubt, disappointment, discouragement, and injustices that face us each day. It is faith that holds that God is good and faithful at all times, for his love endures forever. It's faith to, it is faithful to wonder, he is faithful to hold us firm and stand in a fractured world. So I pray as we call, journey on to remember and reflect on our past and to look forward to, his, uh, to, to our future with the hope despite life's challenges. We will always hold firm to his love and faithfulness. The readings that are set out for today is Psalms 90 verses 1 to 12, 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 to 11, Matthew 25, and 14 to 30. So the psalm, the psalm set for today reminds us that God is our dwelling place throughout all generations. From everlasting to everlasting, he is God. And this gives us hope and the assurance to keep on holding on to our faith in him even during this lockdown time and beyond. Our scriptures, the, our scripture reading today are helping us to focus on the coming of Christ. This time of the year can be very busy with the preparations. Most people prepare for Christmas by buying gifts, writing cards, decorations, planning fam family and friends gathering, and so many other things. Many people will end up doing their Christmas shopping this year on the internet. Later on uh, this year, I'm uh, uh, attending a Zoom meeting entitled, Christmas is not cancelled. And I'm looking forward to hear what will be said in this meeting. And this got me thinking. Christmas is ready. Christmas is coming, whether we are ready or not. It is coming. COVID-19 has challenged us. It has affected our lives in so many ways but it has not stopped the Christmas to come. The first advent or coming of Christ, which we tend to remember during Christmas, happened. And now there, there is the second advent or coming that will happen, whether we are ready or not. In the childhood game, see, uh, I and seek, we find the one who is hiding and, see, and the one who is seeking, shouting, I am I'm coming to find you whether you are ready or not. 
and there is always uh, a lot of excitement and anticipation in both the seeking and the ones who are hiding. Are you ready? In the Salomian reading, Paul is seeking to answer another question for, uh, that they had asked. How do we know when Jesus is coming? To which Paul replied, we don't know. It will be as sudden as the start of labor. It will be as unexpected as a thief in the night. So we have to be ready at all times and not to be asleep or parting night away. But what does it mean to be ready in this context? Paul uses familiar everyday language and the images to talk about him being prepared. Perhaps for some of us today, familiar and everyday language and images might be like talking about the superheroes, the cape of faith, the superpower of love and hope, and many other what is familiar today. How could you describe being rendered as a Christian? Having faith and love as a defensive breastplate and hope as a protective helmet affirms the dignity of the laborers who are being unrest. It seems they were secure in the care of God whose kingdom they belonged. They are ready for action. They are alert. Maybe staying alert as a Christian in our society today is being aware of what is going on around us. And as children of light, may we, may we begin by noticing where God is already working in our world, our neighborhood, our families, and among our friends. Noticing where the dark corners are so that we can bring the light of faith, hope, and love in these places. Sometimes we get weary of politicians and the institutions that make false promises. The praise Paul uses here sounds like uh, for these false promises. There is peace and security. Really? Is it just a kind of thing a wound Linda might say? There is peace and security when they know there is none? But simply we know that there is no peace and security in our world today. We know that. So Paul calls us and wants us to be careful of false promises and to put our faith in God alone to hold on to the hope and the promise of our salvation in Christ God's promises are faithful and are available for us for encouragement the gospel reading sends light on Paul's message of being rendered one way of understanding the parable is in terms of accountability. We need to live our lives rendered to be held accountable for what we have done with what God has given us. Jesus could be suggesting that whether we start with the little or a lot, we should always seek to make the best of what we have. Perhaps following God is taking risk, not playing safe. What is God asking you to do this week? What risk can you take? Who can you encourage? Who can you pray for? Or even provide with the practical help? What is in your hand? No matter what is going on in our world, lockdown and all, God has called us to be children of light in our world. He has called us to have a positive impact on our world. He has called us to be his representative. 
as we wait for a second advent. In our prayers this coming week, let us remember that God has called us to, to a life of mercy, justice, and humility. A life of welcome, solidarity, so that we can be as representative in this world. So we pray for those who are overtaken with the lives in demands, so that they can find their peace in God. For those who are abandoned with anxieties, to find the rest in God. For those who overcome with the death, that in God will give them relief. For those oppressed by powers that despise them, that in God will be their salvation. For those grieving the loss of their loved ones, may God be their consul and give them peace. For those in a situation they cannot see a way out, may God give them freedom. And for all those who are finding hope in him. And today, may you know that, that the eternal God is your dwelling place and underneath are the everlasting hope. May peace be yours. Amen.